when I was a kid, I loved to read. And because I was raised in a, in a great Catholic family, there was tons of saint books around. And this is really where my initial interest in the priesthood began. Because as a seven or eight year old reading these stories of these heroic men, I was so in awe of these priests, these missionary priests, who would go out into the jungle, who would, who would go to different lands to win souls for Christ. And as a little kid, I, I looked up to them and I thought, I want to do that. I want to bring people to Jesus. Therefore, I want to be a priest. So it's one thing to look up to missionary priests from the past, but it's another thing to meet one in person. And that's exactly what I did when I was nine. You see, when I was nine, Father Tim Devine, a priest with the Companions of the Cross, came to my own parish to lead a mission. And now one interesting thing about Father Tim is that he's blind. Now imagine a nine-year-old kid who thinks that priests are superheroes. And now imagine the same kid meeting a blind priest. I thought Father Tim was a straight up superhero. There he was, leading praise and worship, funny, giving talks, completely blind. I never knew that this could happen. And I said to myself, I need to go up and talk to this guy. And I did, after Mass. I told him that I wanted to be a priest, that he had inspired me as much as a nine-year-old can. And he said to me, Isaac, you're going to be a priest one day. You should check out the Companions of the Cross. I went home and kind of thought about this, again, as much as a nine-year-old can, but I pretty much decided then and there I was going to be a Companion of the Cross. And to prove it, I drew a picture and sent a letter in with a dollar fifty from my allowance to the community. You could say I had an early start. So, it was in high school that things really started to change. I still knew that God wanted me to become a priest, but I decided to put my vocation on the back burner. I kind of had this motto that I'll become a priest, but not yet. And the rationale behind this came from the idea, if a guy was to get married, he would have to, you know, provide for his family, uh, be faithful to his wife, basically just be responsible. But before marriage, he could do whatever he wanted, date whoever he wanted, be whoever he wanted. And I thought that this same idea could apply to the priesthood. I could do whatever I wanted and then sometime in the future, be open to what God wanted me to do. And what this resulted in was uh, a series of choices that I made that caused me to lead a double life. Um, it caused me to put a wedge in between me and the family that had fostered my vocation in the first place. Embarrassingly enough, I even had this hiccup line that I would use on girls uh, saying, I'm thinking of becoming a priest. Do you want to change my mind? However, all of this changed after my first year of university where I had a powerful experience with God's love and his mercy in the sacrament of confession. And it was after this that I was able to once again, hear that still small voice of the Lord telling me, Isaac, I still want you to be my priest. And that was it. I decided to give the Lord my full surrender, give him permission. And now look, I'm a seminarian with the Companions of the Cross, and I get to be the missionary priest that I wanted to be since I was seven. I get to imitate the saints who I looked up to. I get to go out and bring souls into an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ.